Using transform tools in Illustrator the right way can save you time and frustrations, and your design process becomes instantly more enjoyable. How to use the rotate tool efficiently, how to let Illustrator be a math expert for you, and how to know when to use the right keyboard shortcuts will be covered by this video. Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist, and I will show you how to create this beautiful flower design in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do to create a flower is to create some petals. I'm going to work with the fill, so I'm going to turn off the stroke and then choose a pleasing light pick. So first let's create an ellipse and then switch to the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, if you press the optional alt key, you'll get the anchor point tool. If you press on the anchor point, it will take the roundness away and make it a sharp corner. This is a really quick way to create out of an ellipse a petal like shape. Once we've done that, we're going to offset the shape. Let me zoom in. And then let's go to Object, Path, and choose Offset Path. Offset Path is a really nice way to transform shapes as well. I will create an exact duplicate of the shape on the screen, just smaller or bigger. As you know, you can set a minus value in the offset, not just a positive value. If I check the preview, you can see how far away from the original shape it will offset. And if I place my cursor in the offset, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to increase it. Once I'm happy with the distance, you'll press OK and you have a brand new shape. Now we can give it a different color. And then we're going to repeat this step. So back to object, path, offset path, check the preview, maybe not as high in value, and then press OK. I'll choose another color. And now we've created variations of the first shape, smaller with different colors. Now I would like to also align them to the bottom. So let's select all of the shapes. In the align panel, Let's select bottom. Now everything has been aligned to the bottom most anchor point, And then we're going to group it. The next part is really fun. I'm going to zoom out. We're going now to rotate this pedal. We're going to create eight pedals all together, distributed evenly all the way around. And we can use the rotate tool for this. But there are a few tips and tricks with the rotate tool. When you select the shape and then select the rotate tool and double click it and open it, you can set the angle. But as you can see, it will use the reference point from the middle of the shape. Now you might think, well, I changed the reference point from my transform panel and choose it to be the bottom, go back, double click the rotate tool, and then change it. But it did not change the reference point at all. We have to change it separately. So I'll cancel. What we have to do is in this case, is select our shape, select the rotate tool, and then press the option or alt key. You'll see with the cursor, with the crosshairs, like a minus sign on the bottom. Now we're going to set the rotate tool right on top of the anchor point. Again, I'm working with my smart guides and now I've changed the reference point. And now I can change the angle, but I can put any kind of angle and then make a copy of the shape and then use the duplicate shortcut to duplicate, but I don't know what angle I have to set. Now this is where Illustrator can actually do math for us. I'm not sure if you knew this, but you can let Illustrator do calculations for you. So I'm going to put 360 degrees for a circle and then use the forward slash to say I would like to divide this. And now I know I want eight petals, so I need to divide it by eight. And now it will give me the angle that I need so I can have eight equally distributed petals around in a circle. To see what happens, just toggle on and off the preview button. And then you can see it is giving me 45 degrees. Now I press copy. And with the shape selected, I'm going to use the duplicate shortcut Command or Control plus D on the keyboard. So I'm going to go and make duplicates until I have my flower. Now this was really fast and easy, and everything is distributed properly. Now let's select all of the paddles and group them, and then create a circle right into the middle. Use the Align tool again to align the circle into the middle, and then we can group it again. Now to our flower, we would like to add a stem. But as you can see, the stem would be right behind our bottom paddle. We need to rotate our flower. Now I can use the Free Transform tool and rotate it, but locking it with the shift key into the 45 degree increments isn't working and to eyeball it to rotate it is quite difficult as well. The rotate tool here can help us again. Since I know I have eight pedals and the spaces in between makes 16 parts, so I can double click the rotate tool. Again, I'll put back 360 degrees, press forward slash for divide, and instead of eight, I will put 16. And now if I preview off and on, it gives me the angle of 22.5 and then I can press OK. Now I have rotated my flower properly without eyeballing it. Now we can continue to add the stem. So let's pick a green, switch the fill to the stroke, and then simply with the pen tool, we're going to create a stem. I'm going to set the stroke 
maybe to four points, and choose a round cap and a round corner. At the same time, I would like to place it to the back. So either use a shortcut or go to Object, Arrange, and then Send to Back. The next step is to create our leaves. So from the Swatches panel, we're going to set the stroke to a light green and the fill to a dark green, same color from our stem. And then I'm going to create an ellipse. I'm going to zoom in so you can see better the leaf. And this will be approximately the size of the leaf. Set the stroke back down to maybe two points. And then use the Pen tool, press the Option and Alt key so you get the Anchor Point tool, and then sharpen out the anchor points on the bottom and the top. Then I would like to alter my leaf shape a little bit. We'll just grab the top corner and then we'll move it up. In order to lock it into a straight position, select the anchor point, then drag it up and then press and hold the shift key. This will lock it into position. Next, we're going to use the Pathfinder tool again. We're going to turn off the fill, choose the pen tool, and then create lines. I'm going to duplicate them with the shortcut, create one line from the top to the bottom, and then select everything and choose Pathfinder Divide. Now I've created my first leaf. If I find my strokes too thick, just reduce it to maybe one point, and then we can move it onto our flower stem. At the same time, maybe we'll shrink the leaf down a little bit, and then we want to rotate it. The easiest way to rotate it is to use the Free Transform tool. So activate the Free Transform tool, and then rotate. When you press and hold the Shift key, it will lock it into 45 degree increments, and then you can let go. Now we can move it over to our stem, then we're going to create a connecting line. So press and hold the Shift key, which gives you another 45 degree, and then you can connect it to the stem. We're going to increase the stroke, and then we're going to select both the leaf and the line connecting it to the stem. Now I'd like to reflect it onto the other side. This time we're going to use the Reflect tool. It works similar to the Rotate tool. Originally you will have the reference point right in the middle, but you can set it yourself. All you have to do is press the Option and Alt key on the keyboard, choose the reference point, and then you get the reflect pop up window. You will see that it will reflect it. You can either set the angle, choose horizontal or vertical, and then instead of pressing OK, we'll create a copy, and then we can move our shape a little bit upwards. And now we've created a flower. Now we can select all of it, group it, and then we have a starting point, for example, for a pattern design. And that's it. Creating an illustrator doesn't have to be complicated, it can actually be very efficient once you know how to get the most out of the tools. And since I'm a big fan of achieving great outcomes with simplicity, I'm always finding new and improved ways to work with the software. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, so you'll get notified when the next tutorial on Vector Twist channel is live. I'll see you then.